Hello, Internet! My name is Catherine Barsanistas, and you are watching The Gluttonous Geek Presents Munchies and Minis, a cooking show where I make a tabletop RPG-inspired snack, uh, inspired by, you know, Dungeons and, Dra Dungeons and Dragons, Shadowrun, Pathfinder, any of those particular kind of you know, role-playing games. And uh, when I have time, which I don't always, I also work on painting a miniature. Uh, today, we are going back to Dungeons and Dragons with a recipe inspired by the Forgotten Realms campaign, uh, specifically from the uh, Iron City of Koltar uh, from Southern Faerun. And the reason why it's called an Iron City is that it's basically filled with a bunch of miners and, and I mean, you know, the pickaxe kind, not the under-18 kind. And steel workers. So today's recipe is called Mantara. Uh, well, Monzrum's Mantara. Mantara is, it's specific to that region. Uh, the basic, uh, I want to say, description for Mantara is kind of like a frittata that's been rolled up um, and served in what's called harrus bread, which is kind of like a really hard bread bowl, sort of a, it's a you know, kind of like a pita bowl or something like that. Uh, the reason why it's served in, like, in that particular uh, vessel is that with a lot of iron workers, they don't necessarily have time to sit around a restaurant and eat breakfast. So usually they want something they can take with them and not really waste so they have something to eat as well. So, you know, you get to eat the bowl that you brought your food in. There you go. So that is what we are making today. Um, Munzrum is in reference to one of these little quick serve restaurants that they have in Koltar, uh, Munzrum's Ready Ladle, uh, which is, like I said, a little quick serve restaurant owned by a guy named Munzrum. And his particular uh, Mantara uh, serves it up with chopped up greens and cheese. So we're going to be making frittata using uh, fresh spinach and parsley. And since you know, in, in Coulter, there's a lot of emphasis on whatever new condiment that happens to be in the area. So we're also going to be mixing some uh, stone ground mustard into our filling, as well as the greens and uh, some four, che uh, four cheese Italian blend, because, I mean, I know a lot of times you see mozzarella mixed with spinach, but I just, I feel like you need a sharper cheese, like a much stronger salt content flavor to really work with those kind of greens. So that is why we're going to be using a mix of Italian cheeses. This particular one has mozzarella, cheddar, smoked provolone, and asiago. Honestly, you can find any kind of six cheese Italian blend or four cheese Italian blend at pretty much any grocery store. So that's kind of something to keep in mind. So uh, now I've described what I'm making. Let's go ahead and start making it. So first we're going to need to chop up our greens. So we're going to need about a giant bunch of spinach here. We're going to try to use, uh, get about four cups out of this. Uh, so I think it should be enough. This is a four cup measure. Yeah, should be fine, especially when it is chopped up and we need to chop this up finely. So I'm just going to kind of separate our greens into manageable hunks. So I'm just gonna split that in half. And just a quick reminder on how to use a chef's knife properly. Uh, what you do is that you take the index finger of your donut hand and put it under here up next to the blade and then put your thumb right on top of that, as you can see, and then just kind of comfortably curl your fingers around the handle. Uh, that way it is stable and comfortable in your grip. Comfort is really the factor um, because if you are straining too hard with your knife, it is more likely to slip. And as you see, I'm just kind of doing sort of rocking motions through our greens here to give that a rough chop at first. But like I said, we want a fine chop. So uh, now I have that all together. I'm just going to take my knife here, keep the end up against the board, and then just go back and forth while using my other hand to stabilize the blade. And I'm still doing kind of just down chop motions as you can see, my knife is staying incredibly stable as I'm doing so. So yeah, and just kind of mush together into one big pile to continue chopping. 
I mean, you don't really want everything to get out of control from you. And yes, as long as you washed your hands, it's okay to touch the food. Just please, you know, wash your hands properly. And if you don't know how to do that, look up Thai hand washing song, pop song, and they will teach you how to wash your hands properly with a very catchy tune. Thank you, John Oliver, for finding that glorious gem and sharing it with the world. And by the world, I mean, you know, anyone who watches Last Week and Tonight with John Oliver. So, all right, I'm getting more to the fine chopped stage as my cats are chasing each other around the house. It is the cutest thing. I wish I could show you, but that would require me to mess around with my camera. Okay, so yeah, we are down to the fine chop stage. Just gonna lump that in there into our measuring cup. Like I said, you want about four cups total. This is half the bunch and about two cups, so that is a good sign considering that we still have another half of the bunch to chop. So I'm just gonna pull this out of here to get my remaining greens chopped up, well, remaining spinach chopped up. We still need to chop up the parsley, and that's a lot easier to do because the leaves are significantly smaller. So once again, getting our rough ribbon chop here just so we can get a little bit of control on it. It's not as awkward to do this with. And then our fine chop. Or, you know, you could use a food processor. I mean, I could use a food processor, but I don't feel like doing it. I mean, I will admit, I am one of those weirdos who finds chopping up vegetables therapeutic. You know, something about having something kind of dangerous and perfect, complete control and doing something cool with it. I mean, maybe that's just the rogue part of me. And it's funny, before I started playing D&D &D with, um, like, performing and everything, I used to play rogues all the time in my D&D &D games. And part of it was... I got my first taste of Dungeons and Dragons with the Baldur's Gate computer game series, which have you seen the uh, the new preview for, well, not the preview, the playthrough uh, sample for Baldur's Gate 3? It looks phenomenal. I mean, I will say the combat system is probably the closest thing to actually how it, combat in Dungeons and Dragons actually works. And you can throw anything in your inventory. I mean, in the playthrough video, the guy throws his shoes at a monster. I'm just going, yes, that's the kind of crazy I need in my D&D &D computer games. I'm all for that. But yeah, like I said, my first taste of Dungeons & Dragons was the Baldur's Gate computer game series. And anyone who's played any kind of Bioware D&D uh, &D game would know is that not only are the traps... Uh, in the game, crazy, stupid, lethal, but there's a lot of them. And another thing you probably would learn from playing a lot of the Baldur's Gate games is that the thieves that you get access to kind of suck. So um, whenever I'd, I mean, I would usually play a rogue or a thief or what, like some kind of form of thief. I haven't actually played a bard yet. I should try that at some point. Uh, but I would play some kind of form of thief to be able to get through all these stupid, nasty traps without, you know, having total party kill. Which has happened. Often. Especially when I try to play something other than a thief. So, yeah. The way I saw it, every time I was about to join a game of D&D &D when I was younger, I was like, okay, so you've got a tank, you've got a band-aid, do you have a lockpick yet? Okay, I'll be your lockpick. 
And yes, I actually referred to classes as such. But, yeah. Now that I'm getting to play, I, I've, I know better and know that not all DMs are evil. Hashtag not all DMs. Um, I am doing, let's see, do I have my bench scraper here? I do not. I'll just kind of use the back of my knife to scrape up these extra greens. Okay. All right, so as you can see, I've got my four cups of chopped, finely chopped spinach here. So I'm just going to mix, throw that into one of my two mixing bowls and set that aside for now, because now I need to chop up all of my parsley, which like I said, takes significantly less time than chopping up spinach. But yes, this is Italian parsley, and it is an excellent, excellent ingredient to use, especially in Mediterranean and Middle Eastern style cooking. I used it in my Roses of Calimport recipe, which is a, a greens, and, greens, cheese, and walnut stuffed borek. Uh, borek is a Turkish style of pastry made with phyllo dough, where you, you know, roll up these file, like all these ingredients uh, into a roll of phyllo dough, move it, I turn it into a coil, well, roll it into a coil and then bake it. And then it's just a really fantastic pastry, really good for street food. Um, served nice, and it's delicious, both cold and warm, though I would suggest warming it up. So yeah, as you see, I have a little bit more control over my parsley here. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep chopping this up. my massive pile of greens. I probably should have split this up ahead of time, but it's okay. Uh, but yeah, I also use uh, Italian parsley in my uh, Daenerys' uh, lamb recipe that I made for Thronesgiving, uh, my Game of Thrones uh, premiere dinner um, about, I wanna say two years ago. And I made a top nut using Italian parsley and Castel Petrano olives. Oh, and lemon rind and lemon juice. And it tasted amazing. So I might actually be making that again soon for my husband's boss and his wife at some point. Maybe I'll do a behind the scenes stream or something. Uh, this is me just, you know, trying to churn out it Three, three or four course dinner for eight people. Which, considering that Throne's Giving was for about 17 people, or was it 14? I can't remember. I mean, you, you kind of get where I'm going here. So, speaking of serving up dinners, thing I'm looking at starting to do, possibly this June, is themed Dungeons and Dragons dinners. Not for my friends, unless they want to come and we'll pay for a ticket, but for anyone who wants to buy a ticket through Eat With. Um, Eat With is a site that promotes experiences, like culinary experiences where you have someone cook for you, but there's something about that dinner that makes it more like a hosting opportunity rather than just, oh, someone's catering for me. Um, I mean, a lot of times people will use, it to use this to teach cooking classes or show off some kind of cultural aspect from, you know, their homeland or ancestors' uh, home cuisine. I'm thinking I would like to do D&D-inspired menus for groups of about six people at most, uh, four to six people, or I bring in a guest DM, because I've got plenty of friends who are amazing DMs, uh, Dungeons and Ma uh, Dungeon Masters. Let's see, that's, I think about two, roughly two cups of parsley greens. So I'm just gonna throw that into my bowl, my giant bowl of greens. 
and you're thinking, holy crap, that's a lot of greens. Well, yes it is, but that's a thing. Um, some of this is going to be raw. It's going to be in the, uh, the frittata itself. Some of this is going to be cooked down for the filling. And a lot of times I find that it cooks down by about almost three quarters, it seems. So yes, you will need all of those greens for this recipe. And I mean, I might even just kind of reserve some as for garnish to kind of sprinkle on top. Actually, yeah, I think I will do that. I just need to mute the mic just for a second because I need to blow my nose and you don't want to hear that. So. Okay, and we are back. So now I have my giant bowl of greens. Just need to give the a stir a little bit. Once I found something to stir it with. So I'm just gonna give that a rough stir to mix all of those uniformly. So when I dig out what I need for the frittata, it's not gonna be too much of one thing or the other. does smell very good. Thank you for asking. All right, so first I'm gonna take about, where did I put my half cup measure? Let's see, oh good, the sound's still on. Half cup measure, here we are. So I'm gonna take about a half a cup of those greens and put that into my other mixing bowl. And then I think I'm gonna take another half a cup and put that into a prep dish, because that's gonna be my garnish. So I just need to grab my prep dish. There we are. And that way we can keep everything separate. So yeah, I'm just gonna set that to the side because I don't need it yet. And now we're gonna be making the frittata portion of our mantara. So, what you're gonna need for this part, you're gonna need about six eggs. So, I'm just gonna grab my trash can over here. Yeah, okay. There's one. Two, make sure that you crack the egg against a flat surface so you don't have eggshell uh, expelling into the egg before you put it into the dish. So, three, four, five, and Six. Okay. I'm just gonna clean up that egg from my prep area. Get the rest of these excess greens from here. Okay. And see, to that, I need to add two tablespoons of heavy cream. One and two. Let's see. This cream. Uh, my shredded.
shredded cheese, the Italian cheese blend here. We're gonna need about three tablespoons of that in this mix. One. Two and three. Just throw what's remaining of that in there. And finally, a few pinches of kosher salt. So kind of a rule of thumb when you go with uh, kosher salt, is, well, doing a pinch of salt is that you take about three fingers and your thumb, grab that, just kind of sprinkle that in, and also kind of keep, um, if you're seasoning something, it allows you to have a little bit more control, as you can see. But since, I mean, I'm not really doing anything particular, and you're going, holy crap, that's a lot of salt. Actually, no, it's not. Kosher salt has the lowest salinity of most uh, culinary salts, so it dissolves quickly, which is great for cooking, and it allows you to be as liberal as you want with seasoning. Um, so with kosher salt, kind of edge on the side. I uh, don't really, I mean, use too much caution. Just throw caution to the wind. Table salt, salt however, yeah, it's, it's very salty. But the nice thing about kosher salt is, especially when you're doing a soup or something that you need to taste uh, as you're salting it, since it dissolves quickly, you taste the salinity pretty much instantly after adding it to the mix, as opposed to table salt, which takes a while to dissolve and um, you end up over salting it. it, ends up being way too salty because, okay, it tasted great right after it put in there, but about, you know, five minutes later, three minutes later, holy crap, it's salty. So yeah, that's why kosher salt is great for cooking because cooking is not necessarily always like baking where you need to have some kind of um, precise measurements just to be able to get the chemistry right. Cooking tends to have um, varying flavor ingredients and it has to do with seasonality, it has to do with uh, how fresh your ingredients are, it even has to do with where they come from. Or, I mean, just how long it's been sitting in the fridge, so you need to be able to adjust your flavors. Kosher salt is great for adjusting your flavors, so keep that in mind when you're cooking. So, right. Now that I have my things in a bowl, I need to whisk them so that it is a uniform thing in a bowl. So just gonna give that a healthy, healthy amount of whisking. Darker, 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 darker. Okay. Good stuff. So, now that we have that mix made up, I am now cringing at myself because I did not preheat my oven. So you need to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to do it on my convection because it's a lot faster and you can have, not have to stare at me looking around awkwardly for like the next 10 minutes. That said, uh, let's go ahead off our space and I can show you the next step. So you're gonna need a eight by 12 baking sheet with rimmed sides like so. And just kind of give you an idea for scale compared to, you know, my arm. We're talking like that. It's like about a foot long, eight inches wide, a bit uh, larger than a standard piece of letter paper. So. Let's go back to our prep area. And you see I am lining this with parchment paper. Now, this is going to keep the shape of my egg and keep it from sticking to the metal. Now, parchment paper usually don't have to worry about sticking, but just for fair caution, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a spritz with some cooking spray. You can skip this part, but since I am paranoid, I am doing it anyway. So, just going to put that down there, Get shake off the excess off our whisk, which I don't need anymore, so that's going to go in the sink. And now I'm just going to pour that 
onto our baking sheet. Scrape out the excess with my spatula. And then I'll take my spatula to spread it out evenly over my parchment paper. Because I want an evenly cooked frittata. Okay. Good stuff. That is nice and even. And since I don't need either one of these anymore, I'm just gonna throw that in the sink. Cool. So, while I'm waiting for my oven to preheat, which I should have, you know, obviously done at the start of all this, I'm going to do something. Yes, something. Yeah, I need to actually cook the other greens for our filling. So, um, let's just go ahead and switch to our stove cam here and get that heated up. I'm just gonna put that over kind of a medium to low heat and let it do its thing to heat up. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and start clearing some stuff up uh, just so I have the room and the sanity and fresh ingredients remaining. So I'm gonna give my measuring cup a rinse because I am still gonna need it for my filling here. Yes. And that means I can also start measuring out ingredients for our filling here. So throw these away because I don't need them anymore. See, heavy cream. Do I need heavy cream for the filling? I can't remember. I do not. Okay. So yeah, big rule with cooking. If you don't need it any, if you don't need it anymore, put it away. I mean, I'm sure that if you've done cooked stuff in the kitchen before and you just have this giant mess afterwards, here's a tip: clean as you go. It will save you time. It will save you sanity, and you're not just standing around going ba 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. Uh, waiting for that to do its thing. So, take advantage of the time you're given. Right, give that a rinse because I think I might still need it. Yeah. Give my coffee press a rinse because I will still need it. That's the thing about doing 20 hour fasts. Um, you need your coffee. Coffee is a nice little appetite sep uh, suppressant. I had my coffee right before the stream. And yes, I'm still fasting. I'm cooking food while I'm fasting because I am crazy. So, got that rinsed out. Cool, and let's see how we are doing on our pan. Just gonna turn our stove cam on. Here we go. That is not hot yet. Oh, it's a little hot. Just turn it up slightly and add a drizzle of olive oil to that. So just gonna get that to do its thing. Actually, let me just grab a pot holder here and kind of use that to coat the bottom of our pan. Now, you want it warm enough so the oil starts to shimmer, but not smoke. Uh, olive oil tends to degrade really quickly. Well, excuse you. 
something made a noise. It wasn't my stomach, I promise. Um, but yeah, you want the oil to shimmer, not necessarily smoke, because once olive oil gets to that smoke point, it starts releasing a lot of various toxins. It just, it, it just makes the quality of the oil degrade quite a bit, and you know, those various toxins, toxins are also a bit carcinogenic, so please don't give yourself cancer. Watch your olive oil like I'm not doing right now. Um, let's see, are we shimmering yet? We are not shimmering yet. So just gonna wait that for that to do its thing. Do, 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 while looking at my camera so I cannot just have my butt facing you this entire time. Right, I think, yes, I was gonna measure other ingredients for the thing. So yes, for your filling, you're gonna need a cup of ricotta cheese. So just gonna go ahead and measure that out in this measuring cup that I have rinsed out earlier. So. And it sounds like our oven is ready. So I'm just gonna turn it down from convection because I don't want it to cook too quickly especially with the time I have. You are not shimmering yet. So I'm just gonna take my baking sheet with my frittata mix here and carefully, mind you, place it on the middle rack of my oven and put it on the side that actually has the heat properly on it. So I'm gonna be baking that for about, how long? 10 to 15 minutes, I'm gonna check it at 10. And it sounds like my olive oil is fragrant, so it's kinda, oh yeah, that's nice and shimmery. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dump the rest of my greens into my olive oil here. And that, I'm going to stir cook until it is wilted and cooked down. So, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Yes, okay. And I'll just add just another drizzle of olive oil to make that work out and turn down my heat just a little bit so it doesn't cook too quickly and burn but yeah um, I'm gonna keep doing that I'm gonna add a pinch of kosher salt And I just really, really, really want this to cook down completely. I mean, I probably want about a quarter of what, um, what I put in here. And yes, it will cook down that much. It smells great though. You know, as great as, you know, cooked spinach can smell. That goes. All right. Ooh.
think we are almost there. Let's cook down just a wee bit more. But while I'm waiting for that, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my strainer out of the cupboard here. Because we are going to need to strain this all the excess moisture out so it combines well with the rest of our filling and stays solid as opposed to getting all leaky and weepy and gross. In short, yeah, gross. So I think we are just about there. Yeah, we are there. Cool, so now I'm just gonna transfer all my greens to my strainer. strainer into my bowl. I'm just going to come back here to my prep cam. And I'm just going to kind of push on my greens to drain out most of the liquid. I want as much moisture drained out of there as possible. So you can see quite a bit's coming out. I think that's about as much as we're going to get out of there. Yeah. So as you can see, I've got quite a bit of liquid left over. I'm just going to drain that. Get my bowl of rinse. And then just dump what's left of those greens into that mixing bowl. Don't need that anymore. Don't need this anymore. Oh, it's going in the sink. I'm just going to turn the heat up a little bit on my, on my skillet so that it, um, it's easier to clean. And I still need to finish measuring out that cup of ricotta. So let's see, that's about half a cup. Yeah. Okay, that is about a cup. Just gonna lump that in there with our spinach. And then, let's see how much shredded cheese do we have left over? Oh, let's go ahead and clean that skillet. So, where is my one pot holder? I need another one. Pot holders. Where did things go? Ah, there it is. So, grab that. Alright, 
go. Back onto the stove to dry. Get all those little excess pieces of greens. And then, just gonna hit that with a coat of cooking spray. Take another paper towel. Kind of wipe the inside and rebuild the seasoning that I just rinsed off. Okay, just gonna turn the heat off. Move that to my back burner to dry and cool. And let's, we're about less than a minute away from checking up on our frittata. Yay. Let's see, how are we doing on this filling? Okay, that is looking, looking pretty good. I wanna make it more cheesy. So, where did my shredded cheese go? I didn't put it away, did I? God, I hope not. Nope, nope, here it is. Okay, so I could probably add, where is my half cup measuring cup? Did I say I was finished with it? Right, need to check the frittata. So, pot holder, pot holder, here we are. Just gonna check. Ooh, that looks good, but it is not completely set yet, so I'm gonna add another three minutes onto our timer. In the meantime, I can figure out what the heck I'm doing with our filling. All right, so to that filling. Oh, there's my half cup measure. You're gonna add about two tablespoons of stone ground mustard. Eh. There's one. And two. Continue to mix that in. Remaining shredded cheese. Probably don't need that much, so uh, half cup measure. Let's. Yeah. There we are. There we go. That is looking good. So I'm just going to. edit my recipe, so I put half cup plus three tablespoons of the shredded cheese. Cool. And yeah, that looks about right. That looks delicious. I'm going to give it a taste. Definitely need some more salt. So. Add a pinch there. Couldn't have to add another pinch. And if you're feeling especially crazy like I am, feel free to add a little bit of vinegar. I've got some sherry vinegar here that I think will go very nicely with this. So I'm just gonna add a drizzle of that. Red wine vinegar will also go pretty well with this flavor combination. So I'm just giving that another stir. And another taste. That's good. Okay, I like that. 
is what we're doing. Another pinch of salt, just to be sure. Okay, cool. So that is our frittata that's beeping at me right now. Where is my pot holders? Ha, ah, here we are. Cool, 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 cool. And how are you doing? It's gonna use probably another two minutes. Thing is, I kind of want it uh, golden, but not really browned. So right now I'm just kind of waiting on that. Um, cool. So we've got our filling mixed up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put away what we are not quite using. And I realized that I just broke my fast by tasting. Eh, it's too smooth. It's not even a full spoonful. We're fine. Fine. Okay, so while we're waiting on that to do its thing, this is when we need to make our hard rust, uh, hard rust bowls. So, I mean, you could use pitas, but I'm going simple. I'm gonna be using flour tortillas for this. You're gonna want about either street size or taco size. So um, I've got some Milagro tortillas here. I believe, I'm pretty sure that Milagro is made here in Atlanta. Oh no, it's made in Chicago. Never mind, don't mind me. I just also noticed that it is the tortilla brand that all the Hispanic families who come through uh, Buford, Buford Highway Farmer's Market tend to pick up. So, hey, I'm gonna trust them on that. If you're raising the stuff, you know where the good stuff comes from. All right, so, got 40 more seconds on our omelet, on our frittata. Come on. I should really just check on it. Ooh. That is looking good. I think we are set though. From the looks of things. Yeah, that is definitely set. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. Two, one. Cool. As you see, we have our frittata and it is perfectly cooked all the way through. It is set, it is lovely. So I just need to have this be cooled about 10 minutes for it to be able to uh, roll up properly. But what I want to do, oh goodness, where are you? I want to get my plastic wrap here. And hope this isn't too hot for it. We'll get a layer of plastic wrap on top of our frittata. Yep, that is way too hot for it. So I'm gonna wait for it to cool for 10 minutes before I do that. So, where is my pot holder? I keep on asking that and I keep on having them go missing. I'm just gonna move that back here and then set a timer for about 10 minutes while I do that. Um, right, so as I was saying, we're gonna be using flour tortillas, about taco-sized tortillas here to make our hard rust bowls. And we're gonna make about four of them today. It's gonna to be really simple, I promise you. So what you need this, you need four, four tortillas, and you need a 12 cup muffin tin. Standard size muffin tin, as you see, I am turning it upside down. I'm just gonna grab four tortillas here. Two, three, four. And as you see, I'm gonna be using the underside of this tin to make them into bowls. So you're gonna want some cooking spray. And you want to spray over the sink, both sides of the tortilla. 
and then kind of carefully manipulate them to create a bowl on the underside of the tin, just like so. so I'm just going to do that with the remaining three and get cooking spray all over my kitchen. And I say over the sink because if you get it on the floor, you will slip and slide everywhere. Please, please don't hurt yourself to make this recipe. Okay. Just gonna... Come on. Do as you're told. And I'm telling you to stop that work, dang it. Okay, cool. One more. Okay. I think I'm getting more taco-like than I am getting bowl-like at this point. Probably should have used some smaller tortillas, to be fair. There we go. Just gonna manipulate that so I get to share and keep their shape. And then wash all of the cooking spray off my hands. And I'm also going to amend my recipe to say don't put plastic wrap on until it's cooled. Let's see. Cool two minutes. Then place. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Hmm. So we have about five minutes left on that frittata. I'm just gonna move this over here. Move our frittata back. Ah. Cool. Is this cool enough to put plastic wrap on? Yep, that certainly feels like it. So now, now I'm going to put that layer of plastic wrap on top of our frittata. Okay, so I'm just going to wait for that to finish cooling for four minutes. And in the meantime, I'm going to pull out a cutting board. Because this is what we're going to invert it onto. Just cover that on top of that. I know this is so visually um, interesting right now. Uh, so while waiting for that to do its thing, 
I realize I probably didn't need to make this much filling. Oh well. Um, I think I'm gonna make myself a drink. And you know, actually break fast. Um, let's see, so we got about an hour in. We are doing, we're making great time. Okay. So, yes, drink time. So, thing I discovered earlier this week is that mango margaritas are delicious. So, I'm just going to. And if you're wondering why mango margaritas and why are you just discovering this? Well, I didn't actually discover that. I kind of knew it. I mean, anyone who's been to a Mexican restaurant probably knows it. So, but yeah, the reason why I have mango nectar is that I was working on a Dresden Files recipe a couple of weeks ago and decided to remake said recipe because it was delicious and it used mango nectar. So, some mango nectar, got some tequila, because tequila, especially good tequila, is delicious, especially if you happen to get it while you're in Puerto Vallarta. God, I miss Puerto Vallarta. I want to go back. So that's about a little over an ounce, roughly. To that, just gonna pour in some mango nectar, roughly an ounce. Yeah. Put that back in the fridge. And then, a bit of margarita mix. And someone is trying to call me right now. Declined. They should know better. So, a pinch of salt and give that a stir. So, you can see what I'm doing here. Ah. Cheers. I have a happy. Mm. Right. So, minute left on our frittata. It's probably, it's probably okay to handle right now. So I'm gonna not worry about the timer. And then just take our stuff here and invert it. But I'm gonna keep this parchment paper here because I'm gonna need it for the next step of this recipe. Just gonna move that there. And as you can see, we have our lovely frittata here. Looking, looking pretty darn fine. And uniform and perfectly cooked. So now I'm just gonna take this cheese mixture that I made earlier and start spreading. and try to get it as evenly as possible. And be careful because you can still possibly tear the egg at this point. So just kind of carefully spread. You just want an even layer. Actually, I think I might actually have just the right amount of filling on this. That would be pretty cool, not gonna lie. So yeah, just continuing to spread our filling you have an even coat. Might have a little bit of excess, but that's okay. Anything excess, we can just pile into said bowls. Okay. Okay, cool. Now that we have about an even layer of filling on top of our frittata. This is where the fun part comes in. Fun or frustrating, you decide. So now we're just gonna take our plastic wrap as a guide here and start to roll into our pinwheel. 
So see, I'm just kind of evenly squeezing, but not too hard as I go using our plastic wrap as a guide. Ah. Doesn't seem to be enough though, but come on. Come on, there we go, there we go. Okay, so we've got our roll here, and now I just wanna cover the whole thing in plastic wrap, but just kinda bunch it up a little bit better. There we go. And we've got some coming out the sides, it'll be fine. And we just wanna take more plastic wrap here and roll up the whole thing and cover the whole thing. So, taking care not to have it cling to everything like I'm having. Just going to carefully, 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 carefully give that a flip. And cover that up. I'm going to put another layer of wrap on there just to give it a little bit of better control. And then let that sit for another 10 minutes. So I'm just gonna set the timer. And start doing a little bit more cleanup in my kitchen while we wait. So eggs can go back in the fridge. And so can the cheese. Mostly I'm just trying to set all of this into the shape. So let's go ahead and clean up. Mm. I love mango margaritas. Oh my God. Dang it, that's good. Don't need the mustard anymore, that can go away. And where did you have things to go? I'm I'm making sense, aren't I? Right. <laughs> okay, so don't need the vinegar anymore, that can go away. Uh, let's see how are our tortilla bowls holding up. Just gonna give them a little bit of extra spritz. There we go. <laughs> Cling wrap can go away. Salt can stay. What else can stay? I think I have, oh, tortillas can go away. Even though I'm really, really tempted to make myself a taco right now. I should make myself a taco. Especially while waiting, because I've got another eight minutes. So, tortilla. And what else do we have in my fridge? In my fridge of wonders. Uh, I've got salsa. Salsa's good. Uh, that's not quite what I'm looking for. Do I have cheese? I have cheese. Yay, cheese. And conquita, and salsa, and what else is in, what is that? All right, those are mushrooms from the left side. I don't wanna use those. I mean, I do want to use them, but I don't have to use them. So we're going to have a salsa and cheese taco. Yes, it's a thing. I'm making it a thing. So I have my glorious uh, Usador's Salsa of Light and Shadow. I made up. And it is moldy. Dang it. That makes me very unhappy. Ah. Oh, 
Okay, I guess I can just do a cheese tortilla. Okay, I'm down. All right, cheese taco or quesadilla. So I'm gonna be a little bit more, uh, I'm gonna do two. So I've got some cojita, which isn't moldy. Yep, not moldy. And I'm just gonna go ahead and load that on there. And I'm pretty sure that my pickled red onion is still good too. Cheese. Behold the power of cheese, especially Mexican cheese. All right. And I also have some uh, Pequeso Doro Blando because I have access to Buford Highway Farmer's Market and it is awesome. And I also have some pickled red onion and mango from when I made my Red King tostadas, which being pickled should not be moldy. Please don't be moldy. You're not moldy, yay! Okay. Okay, so. Pickled red onions with mango. Eh, get in there, dang it. And this glorious, glorious cheese. True, it's not a melting cheese, but it's delicious, so we're gonna be using it. All the cheese, all of it. So, I mean, I could do an actual quesadilla on the griddle, but I don't wanna, so.
Not sure how long you lost me without sound, but I'm back. I had a feeling this would happen. I'm glad that I don't really, I, I don't think I had sound away for all that long. So luckily you didn't miss anything cook -wise, cooking wise, except that um, this is now out of the oven and uh, I'm gonna let this cool. However, um, don't worry so much about cooling time at this point, because at this point you should be preheating your oven. Like you were at 350 degrees. Now you need to crank it up to about uh, 375 degrees. Um, that's doing its thing right now. Actually, I'm gonna set it to confection so it can go a little faster. 375, okay. Um, so, like I said, we need to make our tortilla bowls. Uh, this is done. We're gonna let it cool and do its thing while I'm waiting for one, the oven to preheat, and two, for our tortilla bowls to bake. So, let's go ahead and move that um, out of the way. Like I said, let it do its thing. But not put it on top of our cutting board because that will make it melt. Okay, and looks like it stuck together for the most part. Okay, cool. So now I'm just gonna move my cutting board back here. And, oh, take another drink. So yeah, um, as you probably missed from when the sound was cut out, uh, in two weeks time, I'm gonna be going to Dubai to visit my aunt. Now, my dad's sister is freaking cool. Um, she teaches law out in Dubai um, for the uh, Canadian, uh, I think Canadian University of Dubai. Um, she, in the past, has been sworn in to the Supreme Court to be to be able to try cases there in case any of her cases went there. Uh, she is also like, she has done water ballet in her lifetime as a kid. She learned how to play ukulele and do hula dancing and she's traveled the world and she does ocean kayaking. And I mean, the coolest goals. I mean, I'm only 33 and I'm just going, what the heck have I been doing in my life? Uh, my goal is that when I'm in my 60s too, I am as cool, if not cooler than she is. And I know that's a really, really big, a uh, really big shoe to fill um, just because she's that freaking cool. Um, but yeah, uh, the reason why I'm going, I guess I had to visit family, but a couple of years ago, my brother got to go visit, uh, visit her and spend time, a week out there. And she's like, I want you to come and visit me and, do this, and we'll do the same thing. And I'm just going, Okay, and I'm excited for one because it's Dubai, but two, this is the first time I've gotten to hang out with my aunt, just her and me, since I was maybe 10 years old. And like I said, being 33, we've got some time to catch up. Um, I mean, this is the one member of my family who took a look, uh, I was actually comfortable enough to show my tattoo when I got it. And she kind of looked at it, it looks great. And it's not a career choice, good job. Um, <laughs> And it gives me hope that uh, she, of, of being that level of cool when I'm her age, because um, my dad has a tendency to call um, me her name and her my name. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good sign. I think that's a pretty good sign. So, uh, so yeah, see, okay, we are at 375 degrees, switching that back to bake. So for those just shorting us, and you can see I have a, no, you're too hot. Like, I'm just gonna show you on the stove cam. Um, we've got a frittata roll already out of the oven and cooling. Uh, now I'm just making our little bread tortilla bowls for it to go into when, uh, when I slice it up. So now uh, my oven is at 375 degrees. I'm taking my cupcake pan with tortillas on it 
and just putting that into the oven to cook. I know it's gonna be like, you're seeing a lot of the same stuff in here, but you're gonna wanna have it baking for at least 10 minutes. So I'm just setting a timer for 10 minutes down here and then we can check it. Uh, you want it to be, let's see here. You want it to be firm, not completely burnt or completely crispy, but the idea is that we have uh, a dish that you can basically use the bowl as a serve, like not only serving, but also accompaniment. Like this is supposed to be, um, by, if we're going by the lore in Dungeons and Dragons, uh, mantara is considered a worker's food. So it's a food that you want to kind of buy and then take with you and eat on the way to the job. Uh, because a lot of times they do not have time for, you know, sitting down and eating. So there's a lot of various, um, what's it called, uh, eateries in this city of Koltar, the Iron City of Faerun. Uh, with that very purpose in mind, there is a bread called Haruska bread, or Harushka bread. It's on my thing. I have to take a look at it. Um, but it's bread that's baked in the shape of a bowl. Um, and they serve various, various dishes in. And like I said, you take a bowl of food that is food, go to the job, eat while you take, uh, eat while you go. So that's the whole concept of this. And uh, yeah, we've got our spinach cheese frittata roll uh, cooling as we make our bread bowls. Um, so yeah, I know there's a lot of stop and wait, stop and wait, stop and wait. And a lot of that's my fault for not preheating the oven uh, first thing on this episode. Um, we would have originally started cooking up the greens for the filling as we were waiting for the the, um, the main frittata to bake. So that would have saved you some time. I just happen to be rambling a lot. So keep that in mind. Um, whenever you work with the recipe, you want to read the whole thing for, through to be able to figure out your timing, uh, especially if you are serving thing multiple things at one time. So that's a big thing with cooking. Keep that in mind. Always read the recipe completely through before cooking because you'll find that if you're halfway through and there's something you didn't think of, you're screwed. That's, that's just the nature of things. You're screwed. You can make it work, but you're pretty much screwed. So, I say this as I drink my mango margarita. In the middle of the day, on a Thursday. So if you're probably wondering, why isn't she at work right now? Well, uh, technically the last day of my, I, I worked the last day at my part-time secretary job this past Monday, this Monday, was my last day. I did the whole packing up of everything, the making sure everything was in the right place, and I don't have to go there anymore. Um, which, I mean, it's, it's bittersweet. I I miss my coworkers. I actually miss some of the kids who went to the school. Um, but I am starting a new full-time job this upcoming Monday. So I am trying to get caught up on things this week, as well as, you know, caught up on sleep among other things. But yes, I start a full-time job as an administrative assistant for an insurance company, which uh, fortunately for me, um, the people there that I met, they seem awesome. And I think we're gonna get along very well. And I think we're gonna have a good time there. Uh, it's also only 10 minutes away from my house, which is great because yes, okay, working full-time hours does tend to put a damper on trying to work on the blog stuff, but my, my commute's only 20 minutes total, like maybe 30 minutes total. I have a lot of energy left over when I get home to do this sort of thing. And let me tell you, it's actually easier for me to set up and do an episode when I'm, I've already been up and about as opposed to when I've had the whole afternoon to rest and then I'm just kind of settled in and I don't really want to do anything. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, it was very surreal through the interview, interview process because I, um, they looked me up. They, you know, as any self-respecting employer would do, 
but I actually include the gluttonous geek stuff on my resume because a lot of the experience, work experience I have is in running this blog. I've been doing this for about five years and I've learned social media marketing, I've had to do all my own administration as well as figuring out profits, a lot to figure out finances and everything. Uh, I'm still figuring that out, but um, it does take a lot of background work to get this sort of thing done. And so they looked me up and they thought it was the coolest thing ever, which I tell you, it's refreshing to be able to go into a job and have them be excited about not really, you know, just your skill set, but who you are and what you do outside of that job. And I am, <laughs> it's surreal. It's, it's very surreal. I'm flattered and honored at the same time. So yeah, I start Monday. I'm pretty excited about it. And taking advantage of the time I have left here at home. Um, I'm gonna miss having school holidays. I mean, don't get me wrong. But I'm actually going to enjoy, you know, actually getting paid for my holidays now. That's going to be nice. That's going to be very nice. <laughs> Especially when going to stuff like Gen Con and all that. Okay, so, let's see. I'm just going to take a quick look at those tortilla bowls. Oh, they are, uh, they're puffing up. I'm not sure if that's what they're supposed to do. Okay. Carry on then. That's a bit weird. Well, hopefully it'll work. And if not, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. Ooh. Here is hoping that they settle down. Here's hoping. I'm very tempted to take that out and deflate it. Might have to switch to corn tortillas because these flour ones are doing weird things. Very weird things. Okay. Let's. Take a look real quick at what we're doing, dealing with. Wow. I did not expect that to do that at all. Okay, new plan. We are switching corn tortillas because what the hell? Um, unless. Hmm. I guess it's working. Ow. This is being weird. Why are you being weird? Okay. I mean, go, is going, is it supposed to do that? I don't think it is. I think I might have to switch to corn tortillas because it's being weird. Um, yeah, let's do that. Okay, new plan, corn tortillas. I'm gonna make this work. those out. And then I'm going to get some 
corn tortillas, four of them. Luckily, I still have plenty of leftover from taco night. However, being corn tortillas, they have a tendency to kind of disintegrate on you if they are not warmed up first. So, I'm gonna take those, I'm gonna take a paper towel. And you can see what I'm doing here, just switching to prep cam. All right, so I got four corn tortillas. Just gonna stick a paper towel. over them so they don't stick together. And then I need to microwave them. I'm gonna do that for about 45 seconds to a minute to get them pliable enough to work with our, um, what's it called, our thing. Okay, so yeah, as you can see, <laughs> hmm. I mean, we'll, we'll see if they work but we have some interesting shapes here. So we're gonna try this again and hope that corn tortillas work better than flour. You know, I will admit when I was gonna do this, I thought, well, maybe I can use uh, flour tortillas because they're already pliable and that way I don't have to, um, have to worry about microwaving them, but it, it's pretty clear that I'm gonna need them in this particular sense. So let's get a trivet out because that thing is still hot. Are we good? Oh yeah, that's possibly a little too pliable, but that'll work. We'll make it work. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. I do my Jake Peralta impersonation. Okay. Potholder, potholder, potholder. Here we are. Once again. Woo. Just going to go ahead and spray there's more cooking spray in the other one. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Ha ha! Here we are. So, just gonna give that a quick spray. I'm just gonna take a corn tortilla and manipulate it so that it fits in between the cups like so. Cool. And the remaining two. Just going to manipulate it so it's in bowl form. and also sharing space with the other one. And then I'm gonna spray that again with cooking spray. Right, so that goes back into the oven. Where are you? And hopefully that'll work this time. About 10 minutes. Okay. I swear I know what I'm doing. Kind of. Possibly. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? All right. So I've got some tortilla bowls. So let's go ahead and see what we can make with what we have. So just going to give that a quick wipe down with a paper towel. So that one's clean. And now I'm going to transfer the frittata roll I made earlier to our cutting board. There we go. And it's okay to leave it on the, the um, parchment paper at this point. Now we're just going to go ahead and slice our pinwheels. 
about a half an inch thick with a very sharp knife. these not so pretty ones to get the edge pieces into. Oh, that looks pretty. This one can go into the pretty one. That looks cool. And I'm just gonna kind of separate these and set them aside for serving. Awesome. And I just need to slice up what I have left. Okay. Cool. Well, I'm liking the look of this one so far. I'm just going to kind of strike that with some fresh herbs. And maybe some extra cheese. Oh, there we go. And I'm just gonna see how those corn tortilla bowls come out before I happen to switch the stream off. I'm just gonna look in the oven really quick. If they're puffing up, which they are not. Yep. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And I am curious to see how this tastes. So I'm just gonna take these end pieces and put them into the not so pretty bowl here. So, you can kind of see here. I can just kind of take a piece, yeah, have it go everywhere, and then, mm, eat a bite. So, take a piece, have your bowl fly all over the place, um, the rolls underneath it, and Another bite. Mmm. These are really good. Okay. And like I said, we're just waiting on those corn tortilla um, for ta uh, taco bowl things. Mm. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna. Eat this like the breakfast taco that it is. Oh well. I've got a spammer in my chat on Twitch. Oh well. Oh goodness. I admit, this is the most flattering side of me. But dang it, these are good. Mm. Sprinkle some more cheese on that. A few more fresh spinach and parsley. Mm. 
Time consuming, yes. Worth it, oh yeah, definitely. Kind of like a, almost tastes kind of like a spanakopita omelet. Mm. I promise I'm not usually this gross. Um, okay, I can use that bowl definitely. How are we doing on these ones? Well, they're definitely working. Mm. That said, even though the flour tortillas popped up quite a bit, I do like the flavor that they're imparting on this. So just keep in mind, you can use either flour tortillas or corn tortillas. Corn tortillas, you're probably gonna have to heat them in the microwave to manipulate uh, first, but they like it does taste good with the flour, and we're about to find out how it tastes with the corn. Mm. That is, mm. once they're done, about three minutes. Mm. So this recipe will serve about, I want to say eight people. Mm. It's about, okay, two in that, two, three, four, five, so four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, you can feed about eight people on a single batch of man, um, Mantara. So uh, I think maybe when I put this on YouTube, I might speed up this portion and just have it go and then have it sound just like that or not. Technically, we are still following directions. We're just making more uh, more bread shells. Yeah, it's exactly what we're doing. Oh, I think they're shrinking down considerably, though, just because corn tortillas tend to do that when they bake. Okay. They look good, though. Hmm. Duper derp a derp a der. Let's see, what else do I have going? That said, do not plan on serving these to anyone who is celiac if you are doing both flour and corn tortillas. Because like you said, I, you see, crumbs get everywhere. Cross-contamination is a thing. Please don't poison your friends. All right, so that's about half a minute left. Let's grab this. And I'm going to grab another plate. Fifteen, twelve. Oh yeah, that's definitely done. Go straight in the sink. Okay. Just need those to cool a little bit. Our corn tortilla bowls here. And I think the best looking one I have here is probably there. So let's go ahead and load up our prettiest rolls into our prettiest shell. Now I think. You can probably make about 16 with these. It seems like the majority of these I'm able to fit about two rolls into. 
And I think I like, I think I'm liking the look of the flower bowls a little better. Not to mention if they puff up like that, I'm able to fit more into them, as you can see here. Yeah, isn't that pretty? Though, yeah. Let's see how much I can fit into Corn ones. Eh, looks okay. Fit about one into the. Well, I've got only one left. Yeah. Yeah, if I'm gonna go by viewing comparison, I would say the flower ones look better than the corn ones. But that's fine. Um, I'm gonna top them off with some cheese. Fresh chopped parsley and spinach. Cool. So, there we go. Mentara. So, thank you so much for joining me on Munchies and Minis today. Uh, and like I said, I know this is kind of a um, different experience having an episode in the middle of a weekday, but I enjoy myself and I still have energy to do the rest of the stuff in my uh, day. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate that I'm not going to be able to do these during the weekdays anymore after this unless I have some kind of, um, what's it called, some kind of holiday going on. But. Um, but yeah, we managed to get things done. Now, I think I'm going to try to uh, stream again uh, tomorrow early afternoon because I'll be, I'm, like I will admit, I am an episode behind. So I'm going to be making a recipe that I'm inspired by Pathfinder, a recipe called Lamb Caldo Verde. Uh, kind of a, I want to say, Eastern European and French kind of fusion recipe of rack of lamb where we're going to be serving it with kind of a roast rack of lamb with a Kalamala olive tapenade to go along with it. So I hope you join me for then. Uh, if not, uh, please catch this episode on YouTube. I should have the recipe itself on Patreon uh, shortly. Um, actually, believe it or not, as far as stuff being posted on the blog and videos being posted on the blog, we're still on uh, episodes from last December, so I will be releasing 